How you doing guys? This is Eric from RulethewasteLand.com. This video is about something I've seen a lot of prepper channels and prepper websites talking about recently, and that is the devastation from the floods in the Midwest and what it might do to food prices in the United States. Now, we have a video coming up for the prepper trifecta about things that preppers should stop doing, and I'm going to get into that a little bit on this video without giving away too much of my list. But I do think a lot of preppers are doing what preppers do and looking for not excuses, but just finding shit the fan behind every bush, so to speak. Now, don't get me wrong, the floods are devastating out there, and they're definitely going to have a noticeable, measurable impact on the U.S. ability to produce food. But it's not, I don't believe, you know, maybe I could be completely wrong about this, but looking at the situation, I don't believe it's quite as catastrophic for the entire country and the entire country's food production as some people are making it out to believe. No doubt, it's a life-changing event for those people who are unfortunate enough to have their farms and their livelihoods destroyed in that local area, but people are pointing out things like a million cows have died, and that's a lot of cattle. But if I um, did my very, very basic research correctly, there's something like 30 plus million, um, I think, meat cows alone in the United States. So, and if it, if it was at least, Maybe if that's a total cattle, regardless, there's multiple times as many of everything, basically, that was destroyed in this flood. So while it will have a significant impact on food prices in the short term, I don't think this is going to be some sort of long-term catastrophic event. In fact, I think that if we had no way of knowing that this had happened and we had just kept going to the stores over the next year or two, I think we might be in a situation where we're like, wow, why did beef get so expensive? Or why did meat get so expensive? But I don't think it'd be this catastrophic shelves bare, prices four or five times what they were, as some people seem to think it will be. That's not an excuse for not being prepared, but I look at it the other way. Instead of a, a situation where we should be going out and buying a bunch of stuff, this might be a situation where you actually, a real world situation where you use your preps. If, things, if you go to the store and you find that beef is momentarily $12 a pound for ground beef or $15 a pound for ground beef, if it even gets that high, then use the stuff that you have at your house that's two years old that you bought when it was a third of the price, you know? And also, there's a couple other things that I think will that kind of mitigate price in these situations. And for things like wheat and things like that, it's a little less the case, but certainly with stuff like beef, there's a pretty inela or a pretty elastic demand for something like that. I don't want to necessarily call it a luxury food, but it's not a staple in the same way that, you know, some of the grains are. And if you if people go to the store and beef is twice as expensive, they're just not going to buy it. No one like very few people literally are going to buy it no matter what. So that has a mitigating effect on the cost as well because the price will go up a little bit and the demand will commensurately drop, which will put a ceiling on how far the prices will really go. So consider, for example, if the prices did go ten times as high. You know, if ground if you went to the store and ground beef was ten times what it was now, no one's going to buy it. It would just rot on the shelves. So it can't get to certain points, you know, there just is a point where it's just not going to get that high, no matter what happens. And um, there's alternatives as well. If beef gets super high, people will buy chicken. If chicken is also affected too much by this, then people will buy fish, or they just won't buy meat at all. And if the if uh, wheat gets high, then people will buy rice instead. Most rice doesn't even come from the U.S. And there's plenty of potatoes and things like that that are grown in other parts of the country. So I do think prices will go up. I do think they'll go up probably pretty significantly on certain food items. But I don't think it'll be it's something catastrophic, something that's going to set off some kind of economic collapse or something that's going to be permanent. I heard one channel, I don't remember what it is, so I'm not going to try and throw shade at anyone because, you know, it's not it's not what this video is about. But someone's saying that, that beef prices will never return to what they are now. I think it's a little bit of extreme stance and it's one of the things that I think preppers are kind of prone to because we realize the potential for all these dramatic situations that we sort of see the whole world through that lens of, oh, this could cause it, this could cause it, this could cause it. But you can go back on YouTube alone and watch 10 years of videos talking about this stuff with each different event. And it's always the same. We're still here. We're still living life. Preps are great. They've helped a lot of people survive some of these short term, some of these regional issues. But life goes on, man, as the dude says. And I think it's definitely good to take an outside perspective on this. Realize the real world effects can happen. Act accordingly, but not get too worked up about it. And so we'll see if I'm right, you know, over the next year or two, what happens with these prices. But I'm honestly, personally, not too worried about it. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.